Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 16 of 2020 on exempting imports of the BDF and the internal security forces sectors from customs taxes. Article 1 stipulated that imports of the Bahrain Defense Force, the National Guard, the Public Security Forces, the National Intelligence Service, and any other military or security agency of ammunition, weapons, equipment, military transport, and their parts, and any other materials imported by the aforementioned parties, are exempted from customs taxes. Article 2 stipulated that Edict 7 of 2004 regarding exempting the imports of the BDF and the internal security forces from customs taxes shall be annulled. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 17 of 2020 approving the 5th National Communications Plan and will be operational for a period of three years. He also issued Edict 18 of 2020 approving the annual report of the Education and Training Quality Authority for the year 2020 and is published according to the system of issuing reports of the national reviews and examinations of the Education and Training Quality Authority issued by Edict 49 of 2009. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 19 of 2020, amending Article 1 of Edict 12 of 2010, defining industrial zones, stating the replacement of the text of Article 1 of Edict 12, defining industrial zones. Industrial zones are considered pursuant to the provisions of Decree Law 28 of 1999 regarding the establishment and organization of industrial zones. All zones that have been established or defined under the provisions of previous laws and decisions are the following. Salman Industrial City, al Amzarra Industrial Area, Sitra Industrial Zone, Maamir Industrial Zone, Salman Port Industrial Zone, Hafira Industrial Zone, Al Lahsi Industrial Area. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding the public holiday of the anniversary of Prophet Muhammad's birthday. The Kingdom's ministries, state departments and public institutions will be closed on Thursday 29th of October 2020. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely and Secretary General Dr. Yasser Al Nasser made the following remarks. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the citizens of Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations on the anniversary of Prophet Muhammad's birthday. On this occasion, the cabinet recalled the honorable values and noble teachings of Islam represented in peace, love and virtue among humanity. His Royal Highness was then updated on developments regarding the deaths of the twin babies at the Salmaniya Medical Complex, including measures taken by relevant authorities to produce the final reports on the case in preparation for taking the necessary legal and administrative measures if any signs of negligence or error is proven. In this regard, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed his condolences to the family of the deceased babies. The cabinet welcomed the historic agreement to establish relations between Sudan and Israel facilitated by the United States of America as an additional historic step towards achieving peace, stability and prosperity in the Middle East. The cabinet further welcomed the U.S. administration's decision to remove Sudan from the list of countries sponsoring terrorism. The cabinet also welcomed the signing of the permanent ceasefire agreement in all parts of Libya, which was reached at the United Nations headquarters in Geneva in an important achievement and necessary step that will contribute to establishing security and stability in Libya. In line with His Majesty the King's Royal Directors to unify national efforts aimed at combating the impact of COVID-19 in order to preserve the health and safety of the Kingdom's citizens and residents and maintaining the sustainability of the national economy and pursuant to Decree Law 30 of 2020 regarding insurance against unemployment, the Cabinet approved the payment of 50% of the wages for Bahraini citizens employed across enterprises that are most affected by the repercussions of COVID-19 and insured under the Social Insurance Organization. The wages will be paid by the unemployment insurance account for three months starting from October 2020 in accordance with the rules and regulations specified by the Ministry of Labor and Social Development. The Cabinet decided to take constitutional and legal measures to recover a number of draft laws presented to the Shuru and Representative Councils as it is necessary for the government to issue similar laws to them. The Cabinet approved measures that will commence at the beginning of 2021 to permit volunteering for civilians working in the public and private sectors to volunteer as part of the reserve force at the Bahrain Defense Force. 
the cabinet approved the acceptance of an in-kind contributions in the form of stadiums constructed by the company supporting Al Farjan Stadium's projects and according with the approved construction layout and conditions set out by the Ministry of Youth and Sports. The cabinet approved two draft laws and referred them to the legislative authority. The first amends the law on the prohibition of the development, production, stockpiling and use of chemical weapons and the destruction of such weapons. And the second on the prohibition of the development, production and stockpiling of biological and toxic weapons and the destruction of such weapons. The cabinet approved a periodic report on duties of the coordination and follow-up committee between Bahrain and the United Nations agencies. The cabinet referred to the Council of Representatives a draft law amending the Consumer Protection Law. The cabinet approved five proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives on supporting institutions most affected by COVID-19, the sterilization and migrant worker accommodations, on the fees and renewal of commercial registrations for those enterprises, on wage support for Bahraini citizens working in the private sector, and on reducing crowding on the Zaid bin Amira Street during these unprecedented circumstances. In the items of ministerial reports, the cabinet noted the outcomes of the fourth meeting of the GCC Committee of the Ministers of Education and the outcomes of the sixth meeting of the GCC Committee of Ministers of Social Affairs. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with the President of the National Audit Office, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, who presented the 17th Annual National Audit Office Report for the year 2019-2020. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of further strengthening the principles of accountability, integrity and professionalism across government work streams in line with the Kingdom's far-reaching goals of comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. He noted that the findings and recommendations from the NAO's report has had a profound impact on service excellence and the appropriate management of public funds across government agencies. He underlined the importance of self-accountability as a national responsibility, adding that effective compliance mechanisms are pivotal to achieving the Kingdom's desired development strategies and plans. His Royal Highness highlighted the NAO's role in further strengthening the appropriate management of public funds transparently and lauded its professional contributions to the annual report's financial administrative findings and recommendations. He noted that active cooperation between government agencies and the NAO has promoted best practice within government, benefiting the Kingdom and its citizens. His Royal Highness praised the government agencies that have committed to implementing the NAO's report's recommendations, noting the importance of further enhancing their performance and providing quality services to all. He stressed that the government agencies mentioned in this year's report should immediately introduce measures and implement the report's recommendations to ensure cases do not recur. Sheikh Ahmed reiterated the NAO's commitment to perform its entrusted duties in line with His Majesty the King's directives and in accordance to the law. He expressed his gratitude for His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's continued support and commitment to overseeing the implementation of recommendations provided by the NAO across government agencies. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the second victory of Cordoba Football Club in the second division of the Spanish League reflects the distinguished efforts of the team's administrative and technical bodies in preparing for competitions. He hailed the team's performance, highlighting its continuous development. His Highness wished the team success and victory in its next match with UCAM Marsha CF on November the 1st. Cordoba FC had achieved a second victory after defeating Yeclano Deportivo 3-1 in the second half as Federico Pavaracci scored the first goal of the team in the 11th minute while Mario Ortiz managed to score the second goal in the 14th minute. The team's third goal was scored by Luis Ledesma in the 56th minute bringing the team's tally to six points from two matches. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, participated in the Muslim Council of Elders meeting remotely and chaired by the Grand Imam of Al Azhar and President of the Muslim Council of Elders, Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Al Tayyib. The Council welcomed the accession of Sheikh Abdul Rahman to the Council, hailing his efforts and expertise in Islamic work, wishing him continued success. The CIA President delivered a speech in which he conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty's deep appreciation of the Council, as well 
well as his wishes of further success to its members. He expressed pride in joining the council, which aims to serve the religion of Islam, uphold its principles and values, and serve Muslims in the whole world. He added that the kingdom, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, has been one of the first countries that welcomed the establishment of the council based in the UAE, which is considered the first independent organization that aims to reunite the Islamic nation and promote peace in its societies. He added that the promotion of peace, tolerance, and coexistence is one of the main principles that Islam calls for, and that it is one of the fundamental strategies to build the future of the Islamic nation. The SCIE president added that he would is looking the world is looking forward at the Muslim Council of Elders as a beacon of virtue in light of their reputation of its honorable members. He wished the Council's success in achieving peace, progress, unity and coexistence. The Council discussed during its meeting the insult to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and decided unanimously to issue a statement denouncing it and calling for immediate cease of enroachment on Islamic symbols and sanctities. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs issued statements in which it strongly denounced the insult to the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, expressing its refusal to include Muslim symbols and their sanctities in narrow agendas. The CIA affirmed that insulting the messengers of Allah and prophets does not detect, detract from their virtue or their status to their believers, but rather reflects a behavior that reflects racism and hatred, fuels extremism, ignites violence and conflict, and undermines efforts to achieve coexistence and peace among people. It emphasized that provoking people and their sanctities and beliefs are unacceptable methods that cannot be accepted nor tolerated, especially if they fall within the systematic frameworks of states and leaderships. The CIA called for a serious, clear and urgent stance by all advocates of peace in the world to stop the aggression in order to maintain civil peace, preserve community security, respect religion and protect people from falling into strife and conflicts. It also stressed the need not to use some pretexts such as freedom of expression to justify the offenses, provocation and contempt for religion and their followers. Meanwhile, the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs said that Bahrain's mosques will reopen for Dhuhr prayers starting November 1st. The decision based on the approval of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus means that mosques in Bahrain will open for worshippers for the Fajr and Dhuhr prayers. The CIA added that precautionary measures to ensure the safety of worshippers must be taken during the two prayers. Students continued their partial return to public schools beginning the application of blended education that combines formal education for a period not exceeding two days a week and distance learning while other students continues to receive full distance education. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid al naimi conducted inspection visits to a number of schools to review all health and precautionary measures taken. He also reviewed the educational process in a number of classes, including classes for students with special needs, wishing them a successful academic year. Dr. Naimi affirmed that, stemming from the directives of His Majesty the King to continue providing the best educational services, the ministry exerted great efforts to prepare for the new school year in light of the current exceptional circumstances. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in the 112th meeting of the GCC Financial and Economic Cooperation Committee and the joint meeting of the GCC Ministers of Finance and Governors of Monetary Institutions and Central Banks with the Director General of the International Monetary Fund. The meeting of the Financial and Economic Cooperation Committee shed light on the preventive measures carried out by GCC countries to curtail the spread of the coronavirus. Discussions also focused on ways of boosting financial stability and supporting the economies of the GCC member states amid exceptional circumstances. The meeting also shed light on the financial and economic cooperation as well as progress of the economic unity program among GCC member states. Meanwhile, the second meeting with the IMF Director General highlighted a work paper by IMF on the economic prospects and political challenges in GCC countries. Discussions focused on the impact of the coronavirus pandemic, the decrease in oil prices and continuation of the necessary health procedures as a top priority to contain the pandemic. The attendees of the meeting also discussed the GCC member states' continuous financial and structural reform in the medium and long run to boost financial sustainability and comprehensive growth. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,164 with 302 recoveries, 280 registered new cases and 3 deaths. 67 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 198 are contacts of active cases and 15 are travel related. 
The deceased were 54 and 65 year old male citizens and a 36 year old female citizen. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs strongly condemns the continued practices of the Iranian-backed terrorist Houthi militia in launching explosive-laden drones against the territory of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and targeting the security and safety of civilians. The Ministry stresses the firm position of Bahrain in solidarity with Saudi Arabia against all attempts to threaten its security and safety, praising the competence and vigilance of the coalition to restore legitimacy in Yemen and intercepting the attacks. It also reiterates its call for the international community to denounce the practices of the Houthi militia and its attacks that threaten the security and the stability of Saudi Arabia and the region. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs welcomes the designation of, by Guatemala of Hezbollah as a terrorist organization and the decision of Estonia to ban the party's activities on its territory and impose sanctions on its members. The Ministry noted that this important step reflects the two countries' keenness to confront terrorist organizations and combat their activities. The Ministry expresses its deep appreciation for all the efforts undertaken by Guatemala and Estonia in combating terrorist and extremism ideology, calling on the international community to assume its responsibilities and take all measures to deter and, and end terrorism.